but describing a woman of 62 who is a grandmother <laughs> as a grandmother is not offensive. Now, as far as I'm aware, using accurate descriptive language is not discrimination. Yeah. Yeah. Now, reading between the lines of this actual story, I think this particular lady um, had an eye on retiring at the time. And I think she might have been sort of like maybe hoping to get a little bit of money to fund her retirement. So being slightly cynical now. But I just, where, where do you draw the line with Kevin? Can we not discuss age now? I mean, you know, the, the, the line of things we can actually talk about without somebody getting upset or somebody getting offended is getting smaller and smaller. Now, basically, this lady's feelings were hurt. Mm. Now, there's a huge difference between having hurt feelings and being discriminated against. Mm. On a serious note, Kevin, you know, if you're talking about discrimination, proper discrimination is getting lost amidst this white yeah. noise of Good point. being offended by stuff that isn't really offensive. Let's be honest. I mean, the term grandmother, the term middle age. Do you object to being called middle age, Kevin? Obviously, you're not not quite there yet, but you know. But That's, you actually, Dawn, I'm, I'm quite complimented by, <laughs> by being called middle age. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, middle age. Thank you. Uh, no, seriously. But you say so. Right. The thing is about this woman, uh, Anne Dobson, is uh, to get this straight. Uh, she did fail in her bid uh, to get a wrongful dismissal payout but the reason she failed was uh, a because the judge said this was only an isolated incident so he's saying that uh, by implication it is kind of wrong to call a grandmother a grandmother but also there was a technicality she didn't get her claim in f uh, within the allotted time period so uh, she did, yeah. so so there were technicalities as to why she lost the case but the judge did say it was discriminatory to call her a grandmother well what else do you call her she is a grandmother Mother. Exactly. I mean, it, it, the, the judge actually admitted it was detrimental treatment because of her age and therefore direct discrimination. Yeah. No, it's not. This lady supposedly suffered hurt feelings. That is not discrimination. And the fact that we're talking about this now is that is demonstrates the world of madness we now live in. Mm. The fact that we're discussing whether the phrase grandmother. It's discrimination or a, or a, a hate term. I mean, how long, Kevin, before it becomes a hate crime yeah. well, to call you know, someone a grandma? Do you know what it is, Dawn, though? It is post-truth madness. The truth about this woman is she's a grandmother. She's actually said, I'm very proud to be a grandmother of three lovely grandchildren. Uh, but to clearly, uh, to call her a grandmother is discriminatory. I mean, this is uh, flying in the face of the facts, of the truth. You know, this is like staring us in the face. This woman is a grandmother. You can't call her a grandmother. Well, what can we call her then? Well, Kevin, operating on the principle that now calling someone a woman is on dodgy ground. <laughs> I mean, it's like, I mean, you know, can we even actually be sure that she, you know, she wants to be identified as a woman these days? But the best bit about this story, Kevin, is that the actual review of this particular car, I don't, I don't even know what this car looks like, finished with the car is stylish outside, functionally superb on the inside. Now, Anyone of any age would like to be compared to a car that gets a glowing review like that. I don't care how old you are or what sex you are or what sex you identify as. I mean, it's it's not insulting in any way, shape or form. And I think, you know, we the world is truly going mad when we actually view this as discrimination. Obviously, she was very sensitive about being 62, which is she's not old, is it, Kev? Uh, certainly not, no. <laughs> uh, I mean, in, thir no. in 30 years' time, I'll be that age. So, you know, I'm closing, well, I know. I'm closing in on it. Uh, but uh, <laughs> on a more serious note, Dawn, I mean, this wokery, the scourge of wokery, uh, this is the kind of madness, the nonsense that we get assailed with day after day repetitive day it happens every day particularly pick up the daily telegraph daily telegraph is like the daily compendium of woke madness <laughs> uh so i mean what can we do to stop this the government has said oh we're declaring war on wokery you know we're not going to allow this madness to carry on uh, but they do they they, they 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 talk a good game but they never walk it well, how can we stop this and honestly, Kevin, I, I wish I knew. I mean, uh, this week also you've had the Scottish government um, issuing a statement about the vaccine success in uh, um, England and Scotland saying pregnant people have now mostly been vaccinated. No, no. Pregnant women. They are women. 
What is you know you cut the word women now is 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 a hate crime. That, Pregnant so, people. Is what it, is that people, even... people who menstruate. That's another one, isn't it? For... I know, and you know, and, and who breastfeed. We do not chest feed, and we mm. have cervixes, and men have penises, and all these things. It is now mm. almost illegal to state facts about the human condition, about our biology, mm. about yeah. our age group. It's madness. And the other one was, our, um, did you read this one, Kevin? The yeah. our, um, Scottish civil servants. Oh, the, the, the Z and the Zire and all that requested stuff. Requested to use their pronouns on emails. Mm. You know, and if I see someone with their pronouns on an email, it only makes me think one thing of them. And I'm not even saying I can say what <laughs> that is live on your you radio know, program. Do you know, I keep banging this drum, but you know what really annoys me about those gender pronouns? I mean, the one that was making, or the two that were making me laugh and that Scottish civil servant story uh, were Z and Zer. And what does that mean? Uh, but uh, but the, the, when people want to be referred to as they and them, it's like, no, 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 that's a plural. You are a singular entity. You cannot... <laughs> You cannot commit this grammatical crime. Uh, what's that going to do for kids, in little kids in school? You have to refer to that person as they or them. Oh, is that a plural there? Is that person a plural then, miss? No, it isn't. I mean, come on. Well, it's, how, do, how do you, you know, Kevin, I mean, you know, teachers got a hard enough job as it is at the moment. Um, but how do you begin to teach, right, the basics of English literature, English grammar uh, and biology when you've got to tiptoe around all these new rules we have, you know, no wonder children are going up confused know, in so many I know, areas. I know. These, these kids are going to grow up into a world of confusion. Somehow it's <laughs> going to stop uh, wo um, Dawn, but uh, you, people like you and me, we're losing the battle right now and it's pretty worrying. But listen, well, great... Kevin, go on. Kevin, I just say, I think we should be grateful for being the age we are, even though neither of us are grandparents. 38, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that we are done with all this utter madness yeah well we'll have another go at it next time we're on plank together uh, great to talk dawn take it easy thanks very much dawn neeson there columnist at the daily star former editor of the daily star and my old sparring partner on mike graham's plank of the week i'm kevin o'sullivan and this is talk radio